Grant Nade with State of the Spark, and I'm so pumped you're here. We're igniting lives of explosive significance, and something that blew me away yesterday was that we watched the movie Interstellar. Today we've got the top seven spark goal setting lessons from the movie Interstellar. If you have not seen this, go see it. It's a mind blow. Your brain will pop. You'll go back and revisit your past self and change everything about who you are. It's a phenomenal life changing movie. Go watch it. Obviously, this sparks some ideas about the seven principles of goal setting that I want you to hear that are entrenched in this movie. If I could go back and teach all of my clients about goal setting from this movie, I totally would. So here we go. Without ado, we're going to get into the top seven lessons on goal setting from the movie Interstellar. Okay, you ready? Let's go. So the first one that's coming through is number one, dissatisfaction. I hope I'm spelling this right, dissatisfaction. Having big goals and dreams will lead to a degree of dissatisfaction. We saw this in the movie when the main character was sitting there, used to be a NASA engineer, used to do, oh, P.S., spoiler alert, there's going to be some spoilers, so if you haven't seen it yet, stop this video. Go to the movie theater, watch the film, and then come back and restart this video. So, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, don't go any further, spoiler alert. So having big goals and dreams will lead to a lot of dissatisfaction. We saw this with Matthew McConaughey's character. He shows up, he's sitting on the porch on a farm, he's a farmer, he's an engineer. Flashbacks show that he's actually a NASA pilot training for a mission that got into an accident. So he's always looking to the stars, always thinking about flying, but he's relegated to being a farmer. How many people can relate to this? You're on your job, you're at school, it's a nine to five, you're not really sure what you're gonna do next, but you're dreaming of traveling to Paris, you're dreaming of a multi-million dollar job, or you're dreaming of being married to the person of your dreams, whatever that is, that's gonna lead to some degree of dissatisfaction. That's okay, it's okay, it's called cognitive dissonance. Many times cognitive dissonance is the leading cause of depression in a lot of people, but you're gonna use cognitive dissonance to be dissatisfied with today in order to take off to the stars to your goals tomorrow. Does that make sense? Great. Okay, the second principle that we can learn from Interstellar about goal setting is this. It's okay if you're de dissatisfied. That's no reason not to set big goals. No reason. No reason not to set big goals. I was talking to another goal setting coach of mine. He's a good friend, love his material. But he kept saying, man, people are setting all these goals, Grant. People are setting all these goals and it's making them dissatisfied. What does that have to do with not setting big goals? Now his take was that it eliminates a degree of peace. That might be true. If you want to be a Zen master and that's your goal, get rid of everything. Go buy a cloak and sandals and go sit in the sun somewhere. By all means, there's a time for that. In the state of the spark, that's called the radiate phase. But in terms of setting big goals and in the spark vision phase, to, to gather enough personal energy to move towards the ignite successes phase, you and I are probably in the spark vision phase where we are experiencing dissatisfaction. To get out of that rut, it's setting big goals that will take you there and that cognitive dissonance will be the fuel to your engine to make you take off to the stars. So dissatisfaction is no reason to not set big goals because the thing that you're dissatisfied about is probably a leading to accomplishing things which are an answer to other people's prayer and other people's needs. They need what you're passionate about. So having a little bit of cognitive dissonance and dissatisfaction, no reason not to set big goals. That's number two. Okay, the third principle is simply this, and we experience this all the time. Those you love most and that are closest to you, love most and closest to you, will try to keep you grounded. So real quick, Matthew McConaughey's character gets this offer of a lifetime to help save the entire world by leading this mission, leaving the farm that he's been dissatisfied with, setting big goals to take off to the stars and save the whole freaking planet. And then his family, specifically Murph, his daughter, gives him all the grief that any person can. And he keeps saying to her, don't make me leave like this. Don't make me leave like this. I can't tell you how many times that in my life of big goal setting, when it came to traveling around the world with a semester at sea, when it came to meeting the woman of my dreams, my wife right now, Marissa Native, we met and I knew immediately I was supposed to marry her. People around me saying, don't do that, you're being too hasty. Three and a half years later, it was the best decision of my life. Now, this isn't malicious. They're not out there going, oh man, I can't stand what this person is trying to do. They're actually just trying to keep you safe. But how many people know traveling to another world, traveling to another 
another galaxy, which is what it's like when you're at this level trying to take the next level. It's like traveling to another planet. It's not an easy thing to do. Again, they're not trying to just, some people are trying to justify their life, but not everyone. But the point is, is just like Matthew McConaughey's character had a big, challenging, risky thing. He knew it wasn't safe. He wasn't trying to do the safe thing. So those closest to you and who love you the most are going to try to keep you safe. They're going to try to make your world easy because they love you. You got to look out for that because if it is your dream and you get a break, take it. Fight for it. Love them as much as you can. Hug them on the way out. But if they just won't hear it, you still got to chase that dream. That's your calling because the world needs saving and you're the one with your goals, your dreams, your passions. You have answers that they're looking for. So I'm not saying ignore them. I'm not saying hate them. Love on them. But if they can't see the power of what you're trying to do, you got to move forward regardless. The fourth point is simply this. You will look like an alien. Alien. So Matthew McConaughey's character, again, spoiler alert, Matthew McConaughey's character and all the other characters that travel, they go to this one planet where on the surface of the planet, every hour they spend is seven years on Earth. They are traveling at an incredibly different pace, and the world is looking at them going, we're all getting old, you're staying the same age, but in the world, it's like you're a freaking alien. Is that when you're moving at the pace necessary to move to accomplish your big dreams, you're going to look like an alien. That's okay, just accept it, because if you're on your normal nine to five and you're miserable with it and you take a major step, maybe launch your own business, maybe do your own philanthropic venture. You do those things. You're going to make decisions that make you look like an alien. You might look like an alien, but that's not a reason to not move forward. They will still benefit as they did in the movie Interstellar. Everyone that looked like an alien was actually people from the future helping people today. They were just further in the timeline, further evolved. They had access to the wormhole. They looked like freaking aliens. It was really just them reaching back through time, trying to help them. It will seem like an alien and that's okay just accept it and prepare for it. the fifth point I want to make is super simple you will achieve things of historic significance When I watched this movie, I was just affirmed. You might be taking small steps, risky steps, steps that might be leading to your demise. You just gotta know, these things have historic significance. You've gotta give it your all. The Mayans had a word called O, and it meant you've gotta go all in to do things of historic significance. You may or may not be saving the world like Matthew McConaughey, but you might be saving your world. You might be saving the world of people around you, your business idea, your philanthropic venture, your uh, progress through your career. Maybe you stay in your job and you just do it extremely extraordinarily well. That will save and make history for the people you touch. So sometimes it might be saving the world. You never know. You never know when it's the th when the thing you're doing is actually having ripple effects. We have to go through life and approach our goals like it is saving the world and making a massive difference. I don't care how much you may look like an alien. You need to approach it as if it's making historic significance because whether or not it is saving the world, which it could, it is definitely saved, uh, changing your history and changing the history of those you affect. The thing you do, the goals you set, will make a historic significance in the lives you touch. The real thing you will accomplish is you will become your best self. In the movie Interstellar, Matthew McConaughey did the historic significant thing. He took a risk. He gave it his all. And it paid off in the end, even at the cost of his own life. In the process, he becomes his best self. He's more informed, more experienced, more full of love, more full passion, has done very heroic things. He is the best version of himself. Yes, it's about making things happen. Yes, it's about accomplishing things. As we know in the spark model, spark your vision so that you ignite successes. But we know that successes are actually worthless compared to the changes that happen in you. When you try to achieve a new level, you have leveled up. Goals are never about the goal itself. Goals are actually about you becoming better at whatever it is you're applying your hand to. You not only achieve things of historic significance, you also become a much better version of yourself as Matthew McConaughey did. So this is the final point. As we saw in the movie, Matthew McConaughey travels back in time, visits himself and corrects things. They build him a farm that's a complete replica of his old farm and he sits on the porch and he says this line to his new friend. I don't want to go back to what was. I want to go forward and see where we're going. So number seven is this. You can always go back, but you can never really return.
He could go back to, to the way things looked and felt, but he had become a version of his best self. He had leveled up, as you will. If you step out of your job and start a business venture, you might be able to go back to that job. You now have the mindset of an entrepreneur. You might go back to your work, but you won't be satisfied with just making coffee, say, if you were at Starbucks. You now have ambitions to maybe be a store manager or a district manager. You can always go back, but it's hard to actually return. Once I traveled with Semester at Sea, it was almost impossible. I could go back to the church I was at. I could go back to the hometown, but you never really return. That's no reason to not take your trip towards your goals. That's no reason to not make major leaps. And that's a good thing because that's called progress. That means you've moved towards your goals. So for this Spark Whiteboard Day, we're talking about the top seven Spark goal setting lessons from the movie Interstellar. The seven are this. There is gonna be some dissatisfaction. The second lesson is that's no reason to not shoot for the stars. The third lesson is that those we love the most and those who are closest to us will definitely try to keep us grounded. The fourth is, is once we do hit the stars and once we do travel, we will seem like an alien. The fifth is that you will accomplish things historically significant to yourself, to those you affect, and to the world at large. I promise you that. But number six, it's about you becoming your best self in that process. You can go back, but you will never return. Thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you subscribe to the newsletter below so that you're always getting updates about what we're doing with the whiteboard, what's going on with the state of the Spark Nation, and how you can become a Spark Samurai. Have a killer day. See you next time.